In 1995, a young boy named Lewis has just lost his parents, and his uncle Jonathan writes a letter, inviting Lewis to live with him. Lewis has arrived at the last stop, and his uncle Jonathan appears. He helps Lewis with his luggage, and complains about its weight. Lewis says it's dictionaries that are in the bag, and that he loves new words. The boy wants to watch Captain Midnight by 10, but Jonathan says he doesn't have a TV. They stop walking when the bell from a large copular lined with walls starts sounding, and Jonathan glares at the building until it stops. They hop into a rickety car and arrive at a spooky house. Lewis sees jack-o'-lanterns and asks Jonathan if he loves Halloween a lot. Jonathan says he keeps that all year round, and when they're about to step into the gates, a woman calls Jonathan back. The woman is Mrs. Hanchet, Jonathan's neighbor. She asks if he went playing his saxophone, but Jonathan retorts that the art isn't for everyone. Mrs. Hanchet tells him that she really doesn't care what he plays, only the fact that he plays at 3 a.m. in the morning. She asks who Lewis is, and is surprised that Jonathan is responsible for keeping another human alive. Jonathan promised to keep it down, but admits that 3 a.m. is his best jamming hour. Lewis enters the house, and is awed by a display of different clocks tick-tocking together. He tells Jonathan that that is a lot of clocks, but the latter says it is just the right amount. Lewis is startled by the sound of rustling, and Jonathan tells him it's from a deranged cuckoo. A slender woman steps out of a door, and Jonathan introduces her as his next-door neighbor, Mrs. Zimmerman. And while the two bicker, Lewis feels strange energy around the house. Jonathan tells him he can have cookies for dinner, and encourages him to let go of all the rules he's lived by. After a while, Lewis' sleep is disturbed by a loud metal clang. He slips out of his room to see what's happening, and he sees Jonathan listening to the wall. Suddenly, a figurine pops out of wall art, laughing maniacally at Lewis. But Lewis runs to his room, scared as hell. The next morning, Lewis sees Jonathan and Zimmerman gossiping loudly about going into the wall. Jonathan sends him off to school in a humorous way, that makes Lewis suspect him. At school, Lewis joins a basketball team, but he's terrible at playing. Later on, he plays cricket with another boy named Tarby, who tries to catch up with him. He asks where Lewis lives, and is surprised when he tells him. Tarby then tells him that the house is haunted after a man died there. After a while, Lewis sees his mother, and she tells him about a book and a key, and she says he's in danger. When Lewis asks what she's talking about, she asks if he can hear the ticking. He turns to the wall, and that's when he wakes up. Lewis hears footsteps again, and he follows it. He sees all the strange things in the house, and becomes scared, and loses the footsteps when he sees Jonathan pounding into a wall with an axe. Lewis runs to his room, and packs his things. The picture on the wall tells him not to go, and a chair blocks his way to the door. Lewis starts banging on the door asking for help, but Jonathan shows up behind him, and assures him that everything is okay. Jonathan says, he's not going to axe murder him, and takes him into the library, to tell him the truth about himself. Jonathan says he is a warlock, and the house was owned by another owner called Isaac and his wife Selina. Isaac is a warlock too, and died a year ago, but he lost his clock here, and tries to get it back. Meanwhile, Lewis begs Jonathan to teach him to be a warlock. Jonathan hands some books to Lewis, and asks him to finish those first. Lewis asks if he would have to defeat an evil spirit to become a warlock, and Jonathan says not for a long time. Suddenly, a purple spider pops out the door at that moment, and it scares them. But Jonathan explains, that the spider belongs to Zimmerman, whose spells have been backfiring lately. Jonathan warns Lewis to open a particular cabinet, which is locked with spells no matter what. And while Jonathan is reading a book on Isaac's life, Zimmerman enters, and says that she scoured the crawl space, but didn't find the clock. After a while, Tarby sees a group of girls mock Lewis, because of his goggles. So he tries to convince him to take them off. Lewis agrees and that's when Jonathan shows up in his vehicle. It's a full moon, and Lewis first try at magic spells. He flops his first try, but Jonathan tells him it's the attitude, that matters more than the spells. Lewis finds it weird, so Jonathan shows him something weirder. He blows the saxophone, and it annoys the dogs in the neighborhood. And when he's done, he points to the still water in a fountain and tells Lewis to tap it. But when he does, little stars whoosh out of it, and the sky is filled with a magical solar system. Lewis is enjoying the scene, until the garden lion shits on him. 
Jonathan is about to leave Lewis' room when Lewis asks why he never saw him until now. Jonathan explains that he was the black swan of the family since he didn't really get along with their father. And Lewis tells him that he thinks he's also a black swan. Lewis starts learning to use magic and turns a caged cat's fur from white to rainbow colors. He then makes Jonathan float in the air and doesn't know how to reverse it. Lewis makes water rush from the tap to an annoying kid's face, and channels energy to the moving chair by mistake. Meanwhile, Jonathan is worried about the clock on the wall, but Zimmerman tries to assure him that they'll find it before it can harm Lewis. After a while, Lewis' magic is now better. He does everything with magic now like making his bed and creating a TV for Captain Midnight. Back to school, Tarby has won the elections and isn't comfortable hanging out with Lewis anymore. But Lewis convinces him to go home together so that he can teach him magic tricks for his sports games. And at home, Jonathan has figured out where the clock is. He lifts the arm of a statue and it opens up a secret passage in the mouth of a lion statue. Jonathan follows the passage and it leads to a large room. The giant structure in it seems to be what's been making all those sounds at night. Jonathan finds a chart on a table and he's overjoyed. Meanwhile, Lewis is in the library with Tarby and is looking for a spell to make a perfect shot with the curveball. But Tarby stubbornly opens the forbidden cabinet and brings out a spell book on necromancy. Lewis returns the book and escorts Tarby out of the house. And in the same time, Jonathan and Zimmerman figure out the meaning of an illustration on the chart that the former found. Lewis's mother shows up in his room again and reminds him of the book. She tells him that he can win Tarby over, if only he'd use the book. The next day, Lewis convinces Tarby to give him another chance at magic. And this time, he promises to raise the dead. Lewis steals the book and goes to the cemetery to meet Tarby. And the book leads them to the particular grave they should use. Tarby gets comfortable in a corner, while Lewis casts the spells. But when the tomb shakes, he abandons Lewis and runs away. Lewis also runs back home, replaces the book, and gets into bed. The next day, Lewis wakes up to discover that his spells aren't working anymore. Jonathan sees all the statues gathered on the ground floor, and they're all repeating, he's back, he's coming home. He hurries to the cemetery, and finds Isaac's tomb open. Jonathan tells Zimmerman to help him, since he can't face Isaac alone, but she says she can't help him, and tells him to tell Lewis the truth, but Jonathan says he's only a boy. She then says, she can still swing a hammer anyway. They hit horseshoes into the front doorway, and Jonathan goes to get some more, and sees that the large wall painting has changed to an illustration of them all in separate coffins. Lewis is about to confess to Jonathan what he did, but Zimmerman gets ahead of him and says the perpetrator will be very sorry when they find him. Lewis doesn't tell them anymore and takes Jonathan's advice to stay with Mrs. Zimmerman for the time being. At Zimmerman's house, Lewis notices that she's unable to make magic sparks. He sees a picture of a show where Jonathan performed alongside Isaac. She explains to him that Isaac and Jonathan used to be best friends until the former went to war in Germany and returned a fiercer wizard. He then abandoned Jonathan and married a wicked witch named Selina. She says they believe Isaac killed his wife to perform a blood ritual to make a key out of human bone. At school, Lewis tries to talk to Tarby about what happened in the cemetery. He says Jonathan is in big trouble because of them, but Tarby tells him to pretend as if nothing happened, and promises to break his arms if he says anything. He then punches Lewis when he tries to resist. Lewis falls to the ground and reads the word indomitable from the open page. He gets motivated and returns home to Jonathan. Lewis enters the library and sees the chart on the table. The doors close and the books start flying around, hurting Lewis. He yells for help and Zimmerman and Jonathan come running to him. Zimmerman then gets the chart. Lewis tells them that he can read the chart thanks to the show of Captain Midnight. And with the help of some cards, Lewis cracks the code. Jonathan figures out that the clock is a doomsday clock that will run everything backward. And the people will get younger and younger until they vanish. They return home to find the house torn down from beginning to end. Jonathan says Isaac was looking for the bone key and they try to destroy it. But it doesn't even melt. Lewis confesses to raising Isaac from the dead 
but Jonathan is too angry, and decides to send Louis home, despite the kid crying and begging. Zimmerman assures Louis she'll talk Jonathan out of it, and asks him to wait downstairs. She goes up to Jonathan and talks to him, but Jonathan admits that he's scared for Louis, and that their house is no place for a kid. Zimmerman tells him not to abandon the kid, like the way he abandoned his little sister. She means Louis' mother in her words. After the discussion, she calls Jonathan a coward and leaves the room. The sound of marmalade, Mrs. Hanchette's dog, yapping outside draws Louis' attention. He sees Isaac in Mrs. Hanchette's house, and runs across to warn her. And despite all her questions, he takes Mrs. Hanchet from her house into Jonathan's. He calls for Jonathan and Zimmerman. And as soon as they enter the house, Zimmerman is about to step out of the room. But the door locks on its own. And while Jonathan tries to open the door, Isaac knocks on the main door, where Louis and Mrs. Hanchet are. Louis tells Mrs. Hanchet to leave the door, but she doesn't listen to him. She opens the door and Isaac steps in. He says hi to them, and Mrs. Hanchet reveals that she had been Selena all along. And the dog Marmalade turns into a rat. Louis says he thought they both died, but Selena reveals that the bone key was made from the actual Mrs. Hanchet's, and that she didn't die. She hid when Jonathan and Zimmerman came into the house, the night Isaac died. Selena starts shaking her head again, and turns into Louis' mother. Louis realizes that she's the one who used to come to his dreams. She tells him that she couldn't get close to the cabinet, so she had to use him. And Isaac tells him, that he has to get the key for them. Meanwhile, Jonathan and Zimmerman make it out of the room. They run to the secret hideout and get into a trap set by Isaac. Louis is suspended mid-air in a cage under, which sharp blades await him should the cage be opened. And above it, the rat is biting the rope until it snaps. Isaac asks for the key in order to release Louis. Tells them of his time in the Black Forest, and how he got his powers. It turns out that Isaac didn't meet a witch, but Azazel the fourth prince of hell. He tries to take the key from Jonathan's pocket with magic while blackmailing Zimmerman. But she suddenly uses great magic to stop him. She saves Louis and stops Selena from taking the key. Jonathan is about to take the key, but Isaac attacks him with a bright light. Zimmerman saves him first, but Isaac gets the key and disappears with Selena. The toys and jack-o'-lanterns chase the trio out of the house. When Louis figures out where the hex is, they hurry back and Zimmerman uses her magic to deal with the toys. But she doesn't make it to the hex. And Jonathan turns into a baby when he tries to open the clock. So, Louis is the only one who can stop the clock now. The magic ball tells him to say goodbye. And when he does, he throws the ball into the clock. It hooks and rewinds everything. Louis saves the day, and Jonathan is back to being an adult. And they manage to ruin Isaac and Selena forever. Thanks for watching. Take care and see you in the next video.